everybody. Welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today we're going to kick off the April edition of Odd Jobs and Small Projects. Even though it's not April till tomorrow. It's such a nice day out. I want to get a start on it. First job we have to do is a job we have to do every spring. And that's rake all the gravel back out of the grass. I think next winter I'm going to try lifting the, the snowblower up a tiny bit more. It's not as bad as it has been in other years, but... Um, it's bad enough. Man, that was a lot of work. Wet, soggy gravel in grass is not nice to rake. Thankfully, Deb came out to help me. Thank you, Deb. And uh, we got it done. So now um, that I'm out of breath, sweating, and in agony, I'm going to sit here and do some little bench jobs. Man, this place. You know, they say, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. Well, it's one of those days. I started out the day with the furnace off and the garage door up. It was beautiful, sunshine, breezy. Uh, we were outside <laughs> raking the gravel. And now I'm hiding back in the garage. The door is shut. The heat is back on. The wind has shifted around. And the temperature is plummeting. Oh, brother, what a time of year this is. So here's our next job. This is my little chisel. I like to use it for scraping um, gaskets when they're really stuck on there good. Um, and unfortunately, I whack the end of it with a hammer from time to time, and I will occasionally, uh, and it's bad, stick it in something and try and pry something with it. Well, this is not one of them fancy chisels where the, the steel shank goes all the way through it. It only ends there, and last night I, I broke the handle. So what we've done is we've come up with something so it'll have a steel shank all the way through it with a steel cap on the end and I can, I can you know, tap on it with a hammer if I need to to get a stubborn gasket off. So what we've done here, uh, first thing, is I got this piece of half inch threaded rod and I drilled the end um, 11 30 seconds which fits nicely over there. We'll just put a little tack of weld on each side. And then um, I end face, this is where it, the handle broke. Um, this piece used to be onto about there and it, and it broke right there. So I end faced both sides so they'll fit back together nicely. And I drilled them and threaded them half inch coarse so they'll screw right over that. And then I made this little um, steel piece to go on the end. So we've got something we can tap, tap, tap if we have to. So first thing I'm gonna do is get that tacked onto there. Well, there we are. My little chisel now has a steel shank all the way through it and a nice steel cap on the top. So if I get into a, you know, a, a really nasty gasket, I can just da -da 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 all the way along it without breaking it again. Because I really like this chisel. I got it in a bunch of crap I bought at the auction for $2. And, and, and this made the whole lot of stuff worth it. Just this. Here's our next job. We got this thing for the dogs. It's uh, made by Nerf, and I gotta tell you, they really love it. The problem is, um, they grab it by this end, right, and start running with it, and this is dangling down, and I know it's only a matter of time till one of them ends up with their foot through there, and we're up at the vet either getting a bunch of broken teeth, or worse, a broken leg fixed. I don't want that. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to cut these and then we'll just use the torch here and burn the ends of them so they don't fray. Simple enough job, I figure. Get our uh, Ulfa knife here. Now this stuff cuts easily. I don't know if Nerf thought of this when they made these things, but I thought of it. 32 years of safety, safety, safety at the TTC, even though I work out here without my safety glasses. Don't fault me for that. Okay, so now let's um, raise that up so we can see our, our torch here. There you go. Just like when you shorten the laces on your skates, eh? And then we'll just burn the end of them, blow it out, and push it against the workbench. 
good. And that'll keep it from fraying. Ouch, I told you it was hot. It's better than hot, it's on fire! There you go. So you can see there, we've got the, the ends of them cauterized or whatever you wanna call it, so they can't, um, they can't fray too easily. And now the dogs can't get their legs caught in it. Next thing we're gonna do is fix up all these vice grips that we got at the auction. Um, they don't really need much other than a little bit of lubrication. And that's usually all that's required to keep these things working peak. These things aren't cheap anymore, real vice grips. You could buy a whole bunch of them. I mean, I think $8 and I got all three of these. So... And I mean, you can just never have enough vice grips. They're like clamps. You can never have enough clamps. That's what my dad always says. And vice grips are kind of like clamps. There we go. So that's freed up. And then you've got this joint in here. This joint. This joint. And then you just work them. Oh, look at that. See? And just like that, they work great again. Make sure it locks. There we go. That's a good vice grip. I'll just run over to the grinder and clean that welding slag off of it. Oh, that's super duper. We got all three of these working just like they should. So we can uh, put them to use. That's what we like. Next, we got this nice Mastercraft 8-inch adjustable wrench. Same thing. Just needs some lubing and loosening. Stuff sits around and it gets moisture and it gets dirty. Look at that. Works like new. Doesn't take much. That's all from that. This is um, all from that cheap load of tools in, in that big toolbox we got at the auction last month. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. And it's a Mastercraft. I'm going to see if I have any others that match it. Now we've got this little bit driver that I think has um, some LED lights in it. So we will um, undo this here. And see, I think there's a place to put a battery in here. Um, yeah, two, looks like triple A's. So let me run in the house and grab a couple and see what we can do. Look at that. Isn't that neat? So, um, this sounds like a silly gimmick. And I will only keep this if that is magnetic. And it is. You, some of these things, they, they're not magnetic and you always lose your bit. But that is a magnetic bit driver with a light. I mean, you can't beat that. That's really good. It, it sounds like a silly little thing, but sometimes where you're working, trying to hold a light, uh, hold what you're working on, <laughs> and, and, and turn a screwdriver, it's just too much. So th this could be handy. Um, I will not store it with the batteries in it, though. That'll, that'll have an unhappy ending. Our next job is a lathe job. We got this nifty little steering wheel puller in our load of tools from the auction, but it's missing the, the piece that pops on the end here with the tapered point to, uh, that, that grabs the center of the steering shaft. So we're going to make one on the lathe now. I've got the... 
I've got a piece of round bar in there and we've got the, the tool rest set up to cut an angle. And we'll just um, work away at that till we've got a nice point on it. And then we'll cut it off and finish the other end and drill it out. Now we've got our, our taper cut. Now I'm going to put it back in the lathe. We'll end face this and center drill it and then drill out. Uh, I have to drill it half an inch so it'll pop over that the little threaded piece. There we go. All fixed up, ready for business. Next thing we're going to work on here, our old brass drift is getting really mushroomed bad. So I've got it in the lathe and we're going to um, whittle down that mushroom. There we are. That's a lot better. It's a little off center. I mean, the thing's old. It's been beaten. It's really hard to pick up the center of it um, on this tiny little lathe because the, the chuck isn't big enough to shove it right through. But anyway, um, that'll keep that'll keep chips from flying at my head, if anything. Now we're going to have a look at this little analog multimeter. It doesn't seem like it's been used very much, but maybe that's because it doesn't work. This knob, the selector knob seems to be stuck. Although once we get inside, we may be able to lubricate that or something. I don't know. We can't hurt it any by taking it apart. First, we got to see if there's a battery in it too. Well, I got the little screw out. There we go. Ooh. Two AA batteries all gone foosty. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put a fork in this one. At least we got a nice pair of leads out of it. Now this is the one that I wanted. I bought these two meters just to get this one. I have this exact meter and I'm I'm really enamored with it. So um, let's see if we can fix this thing up. The battery's in there. These are a pretty decent meter. Oh no, the battery's in there. Pardon me. Hmm. I would have sworn that this thing had a 9 volt battery in it, but it's got a couple of AAA's. A's. So there you go. I'll put the lid back on. And we'll see if she works. Look at that. She's alive. So we're going to switch it to ooms. Ooms. Beautiful. The lens is pretty gored up, but that's okay. Oh, I got that on Volt. D. Hang on. There we go. Hmm. Well, that's not looking too good, is it? Let me double check my connections in the back. There we go. Just a bad connection. I fiddled around with the battery connections and it seems to be working a lot better. So 
So all we can do is put it in the toolbox, and one day when I'm doing something, I'll put it to work and see how it performs. Here's my old original one. Man, I've had that thing a long time. Now we've got this mag light. I've pulled out all the batteries that were in it. And uh, they don't look too bad. I don't I have no idea if they're any good. But I know the batteries in these two are good. So I'll borrow them for a minute. And we'll, we'll see if this thing works. The, the rubber cover for the switch is gone. But I mean that shouldn't affect it really. So the batteries check out. They're okay. But the light still doesn't work. So... Um, we're going to take the spare bulb out of the butt of it and put that in and see if that'll make it work. There you go. It was just the bulb. I got to do some searching. I think um, you can buy LED conversion bulbs for these things. I got to look into that. Last thing we're going to do today is put the summer tires back on the old Dodge Caliber here. Um... It's getting pretty nice out now. We're getting near to the kind of the middle of April and I've still got the four snow tires on the on the pickup truck. So if we were to get an oddball cataclysmic snowstorm, I could still get around with the truck. But uh, for now, we're going to at least get this one done. We'll do this side first because that's what side the jack was on. I'm lucky with this car, the frame rail runs back to about here. So it's like a stock car, man. One shot, you can lift up the whole side. Um, Kevin's mechanic tech tip for the day. <laughs> if your car is an old rusty piece of crap like this one, when you start jacking it, make sure you're jacking up the whole car and not just the frame rail and the seat. Happened to me before. <laughs> That's bad. We haven't noticed any funny noises or odd behavior from the car, but still, when they're old like this and you've got the wheels off, just kind of have a look, check your brakes. Now, it's just sitting on a jack. There's no stand, so we're not going to have uh, any part of us underneath there, but we can see what we can see from here. You want to make sure, like like your, your bushings here, that you don't have all the rubber spewing out of it or anything like that, or sometimes you'll see... Um, like this where a bolt goes through, you'll see like a shiny half moon on the side of it, which means the bolt is loose and it's been jiggling around. But everything seems to look good over here. There's no oil streaming down our strut, which would indicate a leak. So I'd say we're good. We can put this side back together. Let's check the front. Now I'll have a fast look at the front. Lots of meat on the brakes. Um, I don't see anything really spewing out of it. The boots on the CV joints do not appear to be leaking or anything. No leaks on the struts. So uh, the last thing we'll do is just give the, the steering linkage a feel. If there's any play in here at all, you'll feel it. Clunk, 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 it'll go. But that, that's good and tight. Another thing you want to look for, you got to check your tires when you take them off. I mean, they will tell you the story. If you see any funny wear on them, or just put on a glove and run your hand across the tread, it should be completely smooth from side to side with no irregularities or jagged edges. This tire is fine. So, uh, yeah, our front end is A-OK. -okay. We can put our summer wheels on now. I got the wheels torqued up to 90 foot-pounds, and we'll drive it uh, 100 kilometers or so and double-check them. I checked the tire pressures. Uh, I got them all set to the factory uh, spec, which is on the sticker on the door jam, I think. Uh, what was it on this car? 32 PSI, whatever that is in kilopascals. And then I just went around, checked the lights, the windshield wipers. I opened the hood, checked the oil and the washer fluid and all that stuff. This car is ready to go in summer mode. That's it. I took it out for a road test and um, the tire pressure monitoring system registered all four tires and the pressures look good in all of them. So I'd say she's fit for duty. Anyway, that'll wrap it up for the April edition of Odd Jobs and Small Projects. 
We'll have another one for May and June and July because the odd jobs and small projects around here never seem to end. Anyway, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for tuning in and continuing to support our channel as it grows. Um, I love sharing with you guys all the interesting, strange, and stupid things that we do around here. So, I uh, hope you'll tune in again. And until then, this is Kevin checking out from the Claremont Classic Garage. So long for now.